In this example, we're asked to determine whether a collection of three specific two by three matrices is a linearly dependent or linearly independent set. So our definition for uh, linear independence of components of a vector space is uh, whether the equation C1 times vector one plus some scalar C2 times vector two plus some scalar C3 times vector three is equal to the zero vector. The collection of vectors are linearly independent if the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution, which would be where all of these scalar coefficients are zero. If the only way to get the, this sum equal to the zero vector is to make all the scalars zero, then the vectors are linearly independent. So in this case, to determine whether uh, this collection of matrices is linearly independent, we'd have to actually look for a solution to that equation. So I'd set this up with C1 times the first matrix plus C2 times the second matrix plus C3 times the third matrix So much trouble drawing those fours. Oop, no, I can't draw two either. Okay, is equal to the zero matrix. So now we need to uh, distribute the scalar in over each of each entry in each of these matrices, and then add the uh, corresponding entries. So I'm going to move this up so I have a little more room here. Okay, so to start that out, I'd have negative 1 times C1. So negative C1 plus 2C2 plus C3. So negative C1 plus 2C2 plus 1 times C3. All right, now moving to the... Um, first row, second column, I have C1 minus C2 minus C3. Okay, first row, third column, I have 2C1 uh, plus 3C2 plus 4C3. Okay, First, uh, let's see, second row, first column. So 3 times C1 plus 0 times C2 uh, plus 2 times C3. All right, moving to the second column, I have 1 times C1 plus 2 times C2 plus 2 times C3. This is a 2 here. Sorry about that. 2 times C3. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, last column of row 2. 0 times C1 plus 1 times C2 minus 1 times C3. Okay, and this again is equal to uh, the 0 vector, which I'm just going to... So it's equal to the, um, the matrix whose entries are all 0. Uh, so that's only true if each of these entries is equal to 0. So what we have is really... Uh, six equations, uh, and I'm not going to write them all uh, right now, but so we'd have, you know, negative C1 plus 2C2 plus C3 equals zero, and then this equals zero, and so on. Um, now, as far as solving this, I'm going to go to the simplest equation first. So I'm going to go, uh, this looks to be a, a fairly simple equation. So from here, I know that C2 minus C3 is equal to zero, which means that C2 is equal to C3. Okay, so now I have that important fact established. Let me make this three a little clearer. Uh, okay, now this also looks like one of the, the simpler equations out of the six. So let me write this down. 3C1 plus 2C2, uh, C3, sorry about that equals zero. Yeah. 
again. I mean, I'm not sure why it is. It's coming out so ugly. Um, okay, now, well, this is fine. So, 3C1 is equal to negative 2C3 if we move that over, and then we could divide both sides by 3. So, solve for C1. So, C1 is equal to negative 2 thirds C3. So now um, we're actually down to one variable now. We have uh, C1 and C2 in terms of the third variable, C3. So we could go to any of these equations. Um, I'll go to just the um, first entry. So the row 1, column 1 uh, entry says negative C1 plus 2C2 plus C3 is equal to 0. But if we substitute what we have at this point, C1 is equal to negative 2 thirds C3. So if I replace C1 with that, then I have negative, negative 2 thirds C3 plus 2 times C3. But C2 is equal to C3. and then plus C3 is equal to 0. So this is positive 2 thirds C3 and then 2 C3 uh, plus one more so plus 3 C3 is equal to 0. Now if we think of the the 3 here as uh, nine thirds, nine thirds, and we add two, then we have eleven thirds. C three is equal to zero. So C three is equal to zero. Well, if C three is equal to zero, C two is equal to C three. So that implies that C two is equal to zero. And also C one is equal to negative two thirds times C three. Well, that'll be uh, negative two-thirds times zero, so C1 is also, this also implies that C1 is equal to zero. So it turns out that the only solution uh, to this system of equations, that's a zero, uh, is to have all of the scalars equal to zero. Well, this is exactly what it means for the collection of vectors to be linearly independent. So since the only solution is the trivial solution, uh, the collection of matrices is linearly independent.